You wake up one morning and something feels wrong. The sky isn't blue, it isn't red, it isn't anything. There's just darkness stretching across the heavens deeper than any night you've ever seen, and right in the middle of it, a shadow, a circle so black, so perfect that it eats the light around it. That, my friend, is a black hole, and if you're seeing it this close, you don't have much time left. Today we're diving into one of the most terrifying and fascinating scenarios imaginable. What if Earth were sucked into a black hole? Would we get ripped apart instantly? Would we see the end of time? Or could we somehow survive the journey to whatever lies on the other side? Let's find out. First, what exactly is a black hole? It's not a hole. It's not even black, technically. It's the corpse of a massive star. One that lived fast, died violently, and collapsed under its own weight. When a star at least ten times the size of our sun runs out of fuel, it can no longer fight gravity. It implodes. The core collapses inward with unimaginable force. The explosion, a supernova, blasts the outer layers into space. What's left behind is so dense that even light can't escape. That's a black hole. Now they come in all sizes. The smallest ones, stellar black holes, can be around 10 to 30 kilometers across. Tiny, yet each one heavier than several suns combined. The biggest ones, though, are called supermassive black holes. These monsters sit at the centers of galaxies, like Sagittarius a star, the one in our Milky Way. It's as massive as four million suns and wide enough to swallow our entire solar system whole. And the terrifying part? There are hundreds of millions of black holes in our galaxy alone, silent, invisible, waiting. Let's say one of them, maybe a wandering rogue black hole, starts drifting toward our solar system. At first, we might not even notice. Black holes don't glow on their own. You can't see them until they start devouring matter. But as it gets closer, strange things begin to happen. The orbits of distant comets warp. Asteroids start moving in odd directions. Even Neptune feels a faint tug. And then Earth's orbit starts to shift. We tilt. Seasons go haywire. Tides surge higher. Satellites malfunction. Humanity would know something is coming long before we ever saw it. And when we finally do see it, it wouldn't look like a star or a planet. It would look like a wound in the sky. A perfectly black circle surrounded by a glowing halo of light, the accretion disk, made from gas, dust, and whatever unfortunate object got too close. The light bends around it, twisted by gravity until it forms a fiery ring, beautiful, horrifying. And somewhere inside that ring lies the event horizon, the point of no return. Once you cross that invisible boundary, there's no escaping. Not you, not light, not even information. Everything that passes that line is gone from our universe forever. So what happens when Earth gets too close? At first, the black hole's gravity would pull on the side of the planet facing it more strongly than the far side. This difference, called tidal force, would start stretching us slowly at first. Oceans would rise toward the black hole like a tide that never goes out. Atmospheric gases would begin to drift upward, siphoned into space. The moon's orbit would unravel. Satellites would spiral down. Soon earthquakes would erupt everywhere at once. Volcanoes would burst open as the planet's crust cracked from the stress. The magnetic field would collapse, and radiation from space would pour in like fire through broken glass. And yet that's just the warm-up. As we get closer, the stretching becomes violent. Mountains tear apart. Continents peel away. The side of Earth facing the black hole starts falling faster than the far side, and the whole planet elongates into a grotesque oval. This process has a charming name, spaghettification. And no, it's not delicious, it's physics. When the difference in gravitational pull from head to toe becomes extreme, objects, including humans, are stretched into long, thin filaments. Your feet fall faster than your head your body elongates. Eventually, you become a string of atoms pulled apart one by one. If you were watching someone fall in ahead of you, you'd see them slow down, freeze at the event horizon, and fade away. To them, though, they'd keep falling, forever. Let's imagine somehow Earth doesn't get ripped apart immediately. Instead, it falls into orbit around the black hole like a doomed satellite circling a cosmic drain. That's when the real nightmare begins. 
The friction from the tidal forces would generate incredible heat inside the planet, enough to melt the core several times over. Volcanoes would cover every inch of the surface. The atmosphere would boil away into space. Oceans would turn into steam. The night sky? It would twist into a kaleidoscope. Stars behind the black hole would appear smeared and duplicated, stretched by gravitational lensing into rings of light. Time itself would warp. To anyone watching from afar, the Earth would seem to slow down as it approached the event horizon, like time had stopped. But from our point of view, everything outside would start speeding up. The universe would fast forward in front of our eyes. Galaxies would spin. Stars would be born and die in seconds. Billions of years might pass in what feels like moments. And then, silence. No light, no sound. Just the endless pull inward. So what's inside a black hole? Truth is, we don't know. No one does. Einstein's equations tell us that at the center of a black hole lies a singularity, a point of infinite density, where the laws of physics simply stop working. Space and time collapse into one another. Every rule we understand, gravity, relativity, quantum mechanics, breaks down. Some scientists think the singularity might not be a point at all. It could be a tiny warped bridge a gateway to another universe or another region of space-time entirely. That's called a wormhole, but even if it existed, we'd never live long enough to see it. Because as we cross the event horizon, the very fabric of our atoms is torn apart, electrons stripped, nuclei scattered. Everything we were, Earth, the Moon, the oceans, humanity, becomes a cloud of fundamental particles spiraling into eternity. It's not death in the traditional sense, it's erasure. But maybe, just maybe, that's not the end. Some theories, like the holographic principle, suggest that all the information about what falls into a black hole isn't lost, just encoded on its surface, like data on a cosmic hard drive. That means in some sense a shadow of Earth would still exist, imprinted across the event horizon forever. We wouldn't be gone, just transformed. Could we escape before that happened? Could humanity survive if we saw a black hole heading our way? Probably not, but let's dream for a moment. If astronomers detected one on a collision course with the solar system, they'd see it decades, maybe centuries in advance. It would appear as a region of space bending the light of background stars, a gravitational lens. At first, it might just look like a weird cosmic mirage, but the math wouldn't lie. Its path would be inevitable. Our first move would be to try to leave Earth. But where could we go? Even Mars would be doomed. Every planet, every moon, every rock bound to the sun would eventually be swallowed. The only hope would be to flee the solar system entirely in massive generation ships or cryogenic arcs. We'd have to carry humanity into interstellar space, away from the sun, away from home, into the dark unknown. And even then, we'd just be running from gravity itself. If the black hole was small, say 10 solar masses, it would tear through our system in minutes. Planets ripped apart, the sun shredded into a glowing accretion disk. If it was supermassive, the process would be slower but just as fatal. The gravitational balance that keeps everything in orbit would collapse. Worlds would crash into one another. The asteroid belt would rain down destruction, and soon the entire solar system would be nothing but dust and radiation spiraling into the void. The black hole wouldn't even notice. It would just grow a little fatter, a little darker. But what if somehow we could cross the event horizon without dying instantly? What if we built a ship strong enough to resist spaghettification, protected by some impossible technology? The view would defy imagination. You'd see light from every direction curve around you, wrapping the universe into a glowing sphere. Forward and backward would lose meaning. Time would slow to a crawl. Every second would stretch forever. And then there'd be silence, a silence deeper than anything you've ever known. You'd fall not through space, but with it. Space itself would move, carrying you toward the singularity like a leaf in a waterfall. The outside universe would fade away until there was only one thing left, gravity. Some physicists think you might emerge somewhere else entirely, a new universe, a rebirth. Maybe black holes aren't tombs, but wombs, giving birth to new realities on the other side. If that's true, then maybe Earth wouldn't die at all. Maybe it would be reborn, 
its atoms reassembled in a universe where the rules are different, where the speed of light isn't a limit, where gravity bends in ways we can't imagine. Of course, that's all theory. No one's ever sent a postcard from inside a black hole. Here's the most humbling part of all this. Black holes aren't villains. They're part of the story of the cosmos. They shape galaxies. They regulate star formation. They recycle matter, turning destruction into creation. Without them, the universe wouldn't look the way it does. And maybe, just maybe, we wouldn't be here at all. So while the idea of Earth being sucked into a black hole sounds terrifying, and it is, it's also a reminder of how fragile and how extraordinary our existence really is. We live in a tiny pocket of space, orbiting a small star in a galaxy ruled by a supermassive monster. And somehow, against all odds, we thrive here. That's not fear, that's awe. Eventually, every story ends. Our sun will die. Our planets will fade. Even black holes themselves will evaporate over unimaginable timescales, radiating away their mass through what's known as Hawking radiation. In the far, far future, there will be nothing left. No light, no warmth, no motion. Just the quiet hiss of fading black holes releasing their last whispers of energy. And then, absolute stillness. Maybe in that final darkness, some remnant of Earth, a pattern, an echo, will flicker across the last surviving event horizon. A memory of oceans, of forests, of life. And maybe, just maybe, that memory will seed the birth of something new. A spark, a bang, a new universe. Because if the cosmos has taught us anything, it's this. Even in the deepest darkness, there's always the possibility of light. So next time you gaze at the night sky and you see nothing but stars, remember? Out there, hidden between the points of light, are the most powerful objects in the universe. Silent, patient, eternal. And if one ever came for us, we wouldn't stand a chance. But until that day, we keep looking up, we keep wondering, and we keep asking, what if?